Welcome to a vintage model steamboat part 7. A bit of varnishing and preparing the hull for painting. I need to finish off the boat stand. I'm going to use some of this. It's Phoenix Precision Paints Satin Varnish. I thought I had some matte varnish but no I was mistaken. This is what I've used in the past. The first thing to do is to give it a good stir. I'm using the paintbrush to stir it. And now we have a varnishing extravaganza. As you can see, I'm applying quite a lot of this to the upright of the boat stand that I repaired, and moving to the other end, I'm also applying a generous amount to that. As this is satin varnish, and it actually dries quite matte, when it does dry, it will not be shiny. Besides which, I'm going to give it a bit of an aging treatment, and I'll show you that when I do it. It's a bit boring messing about with the boat stand, but it's very necessary because I need something to put the boat on. Now it's time to work on the boat hull. First of all, I've removed the steam plant. Here it is. And I've also removed the propeller shaft. This propeller shaft is quite thin, and I don't want to risk bending it. If I remember rightly, the diameter of the steel is about 3 seconds of an inch. And it fits into this very thin, thick-walled prop shaft. Before I forget, I need to secure the prop shaft into the hull and waterproof it. For this I'm using cyanoacrylate adhesive or super glue, but not the runny stuff. This is medium viscosity and it's a lot better for general model making because it doesn't run everywhere. If you're watching this video and you're thinking, well, where's all the machining gone? There isn't any in this episode. There's more to life than machining. I'm actually going to paint this propeller shaft, so apart from the cyanoacrylate adhesive holding it in place, I'm going to paint it the same colour as the hull. And what colour is the hull going to be, I really have no idea currently. It's a long time back since I started this job, and I think it was a sort of a creamy colour. And the rubbing down begins. I'm using 400 grade wet or dry sandpaper and some water. I'm giving the hull a really good rub down and taking plenty of notice of any damage to it or any depressions or anything that needs filling. I've already done a lot of work on this hull. You'll have to trust me on this, it's underneath the paint. I spent many hours getting it to look like this, but that was in the days before I started videoing the process. Rubbing down things like this with wet or dry sandpaper is fairly therapeutic, but in degrees. It's very relative to how much of it you do and the size of the part that you're rubbing down. This job took quite a long time. And the good thing is, originally, when I skinned the outer part of this boat, using automotive body filler, originally it was in such bad condition, with cracks everywhere on it, I used a lot of filler. You could never see the planks on the boat, it was always skinned in filler to start with. I think the filler was more like polyfiller originally. This is a very old boat, and over time, the finish on it was terrible. My idea of skinning the outer part of the boat using body filler and spreading liquid epoxy resin all over the inside seems to have worked, because this has been sat for about 10 years in my workshop at ambient temperature most of the time, and the massive cracking that was originally present has not reappeared. It's a strange one, this. I started doing the job in the first place for a regular customer. I'd rebuilt a couple of boats for him before I started doing this one. I misplaced his phone number, but I had his email address, but unfortunately he doesn't much like the internet and he doesn't use email much. Even though I also emailed his work, I didn't get a reply. However, I did manage to contact him in October 2019. That was the time when I was moving house and I was stripping the workshop. And when I spoke to him at the time, he said I could finish the two boats that I already had. So here is the first one that I started work on about 10 years ago. Time to work on the top surface. Don't get me wrong on this one, it's still going to look a little bit rough because the boat itself is a little bit rough, as well as also being very old. And I really don't want to modify that, I want to keep it as original as possible. I've given the top deck and combing a light rub down with some 400 grit wet or dry sandpaper. Now it's time to paint the floor of the boat and the top deck and combing using some Ron Seal outdoor varnish but I'm not going to use it as it is in the tin, because it's too thick. Please note, this is not the water-based varnish, this is the proper stuff that's been out for many years. And that's why I'm using white spirit to thin it down a bit. 
I've put some varnish in the plastic cap of an aerosol can, and here I'm adding some white spirit. It's about a 50-50 mix. Recently I've been buying some paintbrushes, and they're not all good ones, but this one is. These Galeria ones are excellent paintbrushes, and I've always got good results when using these for varnishing. This is a one inch brush, the other Galeria one that I have is much bigger and a bit too big for this job. First of all I'm going to varnish the floor and see what kind of a finish the brush gives. This is coat number three on the floor so it's not going to look too good because I haven't rubbed it down in between coats. The idea with the wooden floor both underneath and on the top is to fully seal it against the elements, all the water and oil that will be splashing about in the boat when it's in use. As you can clearly see, there's still some marks on the combing and the top decking, but this is not a problem. The original brass screws are still visible, but it's all part of the charm of a boat of this age. Also, there are quite a few brass fittings to screw in place. Quite a few people have been asking me, when I make the condensers and brass parts for my steam engines, why I don't varnish the brass. The answer to that is quite simple, because the varnish chips and then the brass looks really bad and then it's very difficult to clean it. There's still quite a long way to go on this boat. The rudder, for instance, doesn't work. The shaft sticks in the hole and that's about it. Currently, there's no way to lock the rudder in position. I do have one or two ideas, and I'll show those ideas in the episode about fitting the rudder. I was really pleased with this 50-50 mix of the varnish and white spirit. There's not a lot more I can do now. I just need to let the varnish set, and I need to vacate the workshop. I was quite pleased with the way the varnish went on to the boat, so I applied a coat using the superb Galeria brush to the boiler barrel of my Stirling Single. And I think that looks pretty good. I've got a bit of a problem with this Stirling Single. It needs to be very, very shiny, like the original. But I don't want it to look like a varnished fence or an old piece of wood. I'll see what it looks like tomorrow when I go into the workshop but I can't do any more today because I don't want to kick up any dust in the workshop on this new varnish. So that's it for this episode. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.